Assalamualaikum. Beri good morning to all uh, East West uh, International College student and also your ATM student. So our subject fundamental of marketing. Today we lecture on chapter two marketing uh, environment. So okay, learning objective. Uh, three learning objective that we're going to teach you today. Identify external marketing, identify factors within marketing environment to identify, learn more on the CSR, Corporate Social Responsibility. So what is the marketing environment? Okay, the marketing environment include actors and forces outside the marketing that affect marketing management ability to build and to maintain successful relationship with customer. So, what are these uh, factors? Social, demographic, economic, political, legal, technology, competitors. So what is social? The cultural environment consists of institution and other forces that affect society, basic value, perception and behaviors. So you want to sell a product to a certain area, you must also study their cultural environment. Take for example, uh, you want to sell something to uh, uh, Muslim countries. Uh, your product of uh, uh, shirts or kind of thing, you know, for ladies, dresses kind of thing. So you cannot sell, uh, you produce a modern uh, clothing to sell a country which orthodox, orthodox uh, Muslim. Where people they all wear hijab and all kind of uh, shirts and dresses cover all their body. So if you sell something is not can it's not covered to the body. Definitely the the ladies down there won't buy your dress or shirt. You're going to sell them down there. So this is what you mean that the cultural environment. You have to study the cultural environment. Yeah, how they dress, how they use and what kind of uh, quality of uh, material they would like, you know, uh, these are the things you need to study uh, the environment of the society down there. So this is one of the external market uh, values that you have to study. And then core belief. Uh, values are passed from parents to children, reinforced by school, religious, mosque, chapel, uh, business and government. So very good example I give you give you is a McDonald uh, restaurant open in India. First uh, round they open they close because why they don't study the religious and core belief of the Indian people in India. What is the core values and belief in India? They don't eat beef. Indian don't eat beef in India. But sometimes you see Indian eat beef. Here in Malaysia or other country, but religious wise, they don't eat beef. So when McDonald uh, open uh, in India, their main product they sell is beef burger, right? That is McDonald, known to be burger, burger, burger kind of uh, product. So first round they open the whole India, nobody, the Indian does not go to the McDonald restaurant to eat because they don't eat the beef. So McDonald closed down, whole India closed down. They then only they study why these Indian people don't go to their McDonald shops or restaurant. Then only they find out because of religious and uh, beliefs that they don't eat the beef, so they don't uh, go and buy beef burger or restaurant, McDonald's restaurant in India. Uh, this is the mistake. Lah. So because why? McDonald's don't study the core belief. It's a good example. You want to know more, you can Google what I said just now. Secondary belief derive. Secondary belief derive from derive from self-views. Yeah? Uh, others, organization, society and nature of the world. So it's similar like the Indian cases now lah. Eh? The beliefs of the society kind of thing. They don't eat beef. So you you don't study their 
beliefs and uh, religious, then you have the same problem. It's almost to the second uh, for belief kind of stupid. Social, okay, people view themselves. People vary in the emphasis on serving themselves versus serving others. How we treat our own self is different when we treating those of our circle. So some people are willing to go to an extent for others but being cheap with their own self and vice versa. So sometimes lah, I see when uh, I see even in your house lah, when your parent invite somebody guest to your house, they will cook a very good meal food for the guest. So this other thing happen. So same thing. So if uh, in the social you have a fine dining restaurant for example so if people want to treat the guests from other state overseas what kind of thing so they will bring to your restaurant because they want to impress their guests social socially they are some sort that kind of uh, standard they give good uh, foods and hospitality to their guests so this is we call it social beliefs people view of themselves Sometimes the food is the same. You eat the roti canai in the Palita shop, in the roti canai in the nice dining restaurant, it's still roti canai lah. Not much a different. Still the roti lah kan. But because of the belief that they bring them to a better restaurant, they will improve their social status of kind of thing. So that's happened. So you must understand where you want to set up your business for your marketing activities people views others people perception toward the outside circle this goes for introvert extrovert and ambient personality it's related to the first point i said just now not much to explain people views of organization as the world rapidly evolve people are seeking changes therefore this result a decline of loyalty toward, towards organization so depend now uh, Regarding the people you of you on the organization. So in this world we have uh, developed countries, underdeveloped countries, developing countries. So it depends. Like for Malaysia, we are developing countries. So we can see the various type of organization in the country. And that's why you can see various type of marketing activities happening. Even in one uh, supermarket, you can see, for example, uh, here, you see, can see Maidin supermarket. Uh, that Maidin supermarket, different means for different kind of people to buy things. Then you can see Ion supermarket. Uh, you go to Kuala Lumpur, you got all kind of upper end uh, supermarket. Grocery, that grocery, this one. And their product is all different. Product sold in uh, Maidin is is uh, not the same product sold in Aeon and those even on the higher end supermarket. So even one kind of market you do in uh, in uh, in uh, what you call it the uh, supermarket also you can you can see there are three level of product that is sold in this organization because people view different things at different organization. Those rich people, they won't go to Maiden supermarket, for example. Okay, people view of society. Patriot, you defend it. Reformers, they want to change. Malcontent, they want to leave it. These all the people associate individual views and different strata society we have in the country then you ha you can see all this happening people view of nature some feel some feel ruled by it some feel in harmony with it some seek to master it so people view of universe this emphasis of view of spirituality this shapes the core of secondary belief or views all these kind of thing you need to take into account for your marketing activities different people different needs Different uh, strata of people, they buy different things. Although you buy shirt, 
but rich people don't buy the same shirt, right? For example, uh, car. Rich people don't buy the car because of their social status. They buy different kinds of car. So social play a very important uh, role in doing marketing activities. You need to understand the social background of each community before you can sell your product. Uh, that's where your marketing activities uh, promotion, everything, research on the marketing is very important to sell your product to which target area, to which target strata or society of people that you're going to uh, promote your product. Demographic, demographic means what is demographic? A study of human population. Demographic means study human population. So when you do marketing, you need to, because just now we're talking about the social status. And now we're looking to the second part, the demographic. So we need to see the size of density. For example, in Kuala Lumpur, very high density. Seramban, also high density. But Kuala Pila, Bao, it's not high. It's different location, different, different density of people. So you want to sell a product, you must know. Your marketing must know. Your very high density population, how are you going to sell a product? Because even high density population doesn't mean that these people social strata is the same. Kuala Lumpur very high density, but they have the from the rich people right to the poor people on the ground. So you need to know location just now, whether Kuala Lumpur, Seremban, or Bahau or small village, you still can sell a product, but you want to must know the density population down there for you to uh, promote. Especially what you want to know, the age, the gender, race. For example, in uh, in the villages, more old people is staying down there. So you cannot sell a product which means for young people. Simple as that. Lah. Race, it depends. You want to sell something uh, Islamic product, you cannot sell a place like in Penang, for example, because not many Islam people down there. Or overseas, you want to sell Islamic product that you produce. You cannot sell to those countries which don't have much Islam people. Then also you need to see the occupation, the income lah, the income. For example, here in Malaysia, Putrajaya, we take example, I think 90% of people down there are uh, salary earner, salary earner, they work with the government. Uh, then you know this kind of people roughly how much their income, how much they can spend for the product they have to sell. Kuala Lumpur different, 90% they are all business people. Uh, so they have more money maybe from those people in Putrajaya. So Putrajaya maybe when people buy one car, what people in KL buy three cars. For example, lah, if you are selling car, so you want, must know where the country, uh, the, the location that you can sell uh, more your product. So this is uh, what you call it, demographic environment, which involve people and people in the marketplace. Demographic trends, as I said just now, you have to uh, do your survey, age of the people, family structure, how much is the income, how many in the family are working, how many in the family are still studying, yeah? that's what we call it, family structure. There are people, young people, they have uh, small children, you know that you can see, sell your product if you are making a uh, Product for children, uh, then you know. For example, in Putrajaya, there are a lot of young couples married or just working down there. So they have a lot of small children. Uh, so this is good for you to penetrate, maybe to sell product you produce for children. Geographic population, 
you have to see whether what kind of races, what kind of people are staying around there. Educational characteristic and population diversity. Uh, you want to see also. For example, uh, maybe you want to sell a product at your steam layer area. Or you can see these people are very qualified people. Doctor, PhD, yeah, masters people are staying around the area. Because they are all lecturing at the university. Uh, so you want to sell product, maybe to these smart people, what you want to sell to sell to them. All this you make your own uh, calculation because then you can think of what product you want to market to them. Okay, we can take Afghanistan for example. The demographic in the second country has shifted greatly when Taliban took over the country. So for example, in Afghanistan now, they are turning upside down. All must follow the Muslim rules and regulation. Definitely anything you want to sell... Uh, non-halal or clothes which is not following the Islamic uh, custom and religion, you cannot sell to Afghanistan. Uh, so this is example of market uh, background they have need to, to think. But if you sell good halal product, you're producing good halal product, maybe Afghanistan is the main, one of the main target you can look into. Uh, unless they have this product down there, you know, you can't sell. Uh. I'm talking about product. You you produce product that is for Muslim market, which is not available in Afghanistan, for example. Uh, then, this is a good country opening for those Muslim or halal product. Okay, then you can look into the baby boomers. Uh, people who were born between 1946 to 1974. So these baby boomers, one we call it, they are now age 57 to 75 years old. So what these people need at this age, 57 to 75 years old, what kind of product you think they need? So you produce lah that product to these kind of people. And you know these baby boomers, how many millions of them now in the world, which age of 57 to 75 years old. So you have to do your research lah. After baby boomers, we're talking about Gen X, people who are born 1965 to 76. Here again, you have to study what these people need, those within this age, 45 to 56. Cautious economic condition, less materialistic, family comes first. This age of people now, maybe their final lap of their working uh, age, so they are more cautious on their money-wise, spending-wise. Because they worry once they're retired, they don't have money. Then uh, they are simple, are less materialistic. They now don't need much of those materialistic. They already age 55, 56 years old. They're not young fellow. Who oh, maybe young lady will buy two or three bag handbag. This type of people maybe one handbag is enough for them. Uh, so they have to study lah. Uh, this kind of uh, generation of people. What come? product you think you can sell to them. And this is the marketing factors that you have to look into. Gen Y. Uh, people now talking within the age of uh, 46, 21 years old. Uh, they are comfort with technology. So these type of people, maybe all the gadget you can sell to them. Right? So how are you going to target to sell to them? Uh, you have to see. Right? They are more uh, IT kind of uh, uh, expert. So you, this kind of uh, age of people, maybe you can target a lot of the new product, technology product that you can sell to them. Whereas those people like baby boomers just now, uh, even a uh, smartphone also you cannot sell to them. I have a friend who aged now about 70 years old. They're still using the old phone. They don't want to change to the iPhone. Because for them, it's very difficult to operate. So, this is what I'm trying to say. You can't sell an iPhone to a baby boomers. That means people who are aged between 60 to 70 years old, 75 years old. But you can sell plenty of them to Gen Y people. So, this is the demographic based on the age-wise. So, all this you need to, to, to take into consideration when you do the market. Okay, new edition of generation, uh, current generation, we call it Gen X. Uh, 
or we call it now the young millennial. Uh, they are very, very technology savvy, opinionated, uh, vulnerable and fragile personality, uh, materialistic. Uh, this type of young yuppie, we call it. What product you can target this one? Then. These are people who are born within 2011 until today. Yeah? So you can see just now, even demographic age also play an important role of what product you can market. So in demographic pattern, we can see people are okay getting divorced. The statistic there, 10,000 non-Muslim and 6 non-Muslim cases per March 2021 reported by the star. So for these diverse people, what product do you think you can sell to them? And this is also another market research that you have to look into. Increase in working women. Now more, work, more women are working. Last time women depend on the salary of the husband. So the husband give him X dollars, that's only the money they can spend. But now more women are working, they got plenty of income. So you can target what you think the women want more in their product. Handbag ke, or shirts ke, clothing ke, makeup ke, all kind of these things. I see now women have more strong purchasing power because they are working. So you can sell more product for example to the women. So you can develop product or you can become agent to do makeup. In Malaysia now very popular makeup. Siti Noh Aliza makeup, that makeup, this kind of, all kind of people makeup now. Because why? Women now can purchase with their own money. They don't need to depend on the husband because they are working. They have a better purchasing power now than before. Uh, estimate now we have 6.1 million women working. Those days maybe you get 1 million of women working so difficult to get. Okay, there's also demography on decline of birth rate. Uh, so, because of this, maybe you have to be careful. You want to sell more like this uh, new newborn baby product. Because not many baby pro, uh, is born because of declining birth rate. For example, lah, doesn't mean that you cannot sell. There's still people uh, uh, born but uh, declining so you cannot produce so much because the demand is not there. Also, you have to take into account on your marketing activities. Increase of the rate. Uh, so increase by 10% uh, counting due to COVID. Uh, now because of COVID, more people die. So it may also affect your marketing activities. People are more now, maybe you have to look more now to sell more on health uh, product, supplement product, medicine. People are more worried to catch COVID and die. So this also another product, business activity for you to do because of the COVID. More people will need more health product and medicine to support. Yeah daily activities. There's still business. For example, in Malaysia now, lah, government, let's do development. But they spend money more on health sector because to combat the COVID activities. This is a good example. Lah. Because of this high death rate, everything, now government reduced the budget to do development, but spend more billions of dollars to uh, medical sector to help improve or to fight the COVID situation. Economic, okay. Economic environment, factors affecting consumer spending power and spending pattern. We did touch this already in the early on. How the consumer spending pattern because of the salary, because now women, women working. So all these things uh, relate to the economic activity of individual of certain section of the society. Industrial economies are richer market. Industrial economy is centered around the population of tangible finished food, goods and infrastructure. So industrial economy is certain product that is not used for individual but used for industries. The product, industry buy this product to produce product. For example, car, car industry, they buy uh, tire to produce car. So we call it industrial product. Yeah? So this is a good example. You need to buy uh, tire to produce car. 
But the modus tire, what you need? You need rubber. Uh, so all this, we call it industrial economies. Uh, that affect the marketing. So we have the subsistence uh, economies. Consume most of their uh, own agriculture and industrial, industrial output. So what do you mean by subsistence, subsistence economy? Eh? Subsistence economy is an economy which is not based on money. Okay? They don't buy and sell using money. Using butter system. They use butter system. That means I give you rice, you give me wheat. I give you sugar, you give me flour. That kind of thing. So, example of countries implementing such economy. Uh, those countries, Greenland, Alaska, some part of Canada. They use butter trade. So, we call this type of economy, subsistence economy. Compare just now to industrial economy, which we deal by and selling using money as an exchange. So, value of marketing. So, value of marketing is offering value for money. Uh, this is more just now we're talking to the industrial economy. People buy and sell using money. Uh, right combination for quality and service at a fair price. Yeah. So, people buy and sell money. You want to buy something, you go to the supermarket. That market, any market. So, you use money as a medium of exchange. This is we call it under the industrial economy. Whereas you compare to the subsistence economy, they don't use money, they don't value the money for transaction, but they use butter system. That's another type of marketing activity. Technology, most dramatic force in changing the marketplace Kodak went out of service due to change of technology. Okay, story of Kodak. Kodak, very very interesting. If you can Google, but I give you the story in the in the summary lah. Kodak is the first, or Kodak was the first in the world who produced film for you to make, to use to take photograph. You understand? Eh? You take photograph. I don't know these young people know about Kodak. My age before, we need to buy Kodak film, put into the camera to take photograph. Understand? Eh? So you need to buy Kodak film, put inside the camera, take the picture, then they said they call it. They have to wash it and then produce the picture. So as technology as technology improve changing, Japan is the first country <coughs> does not use any more film to take photograph. They call it. They produce what we call it digital camera. They take film using technology, using digital. No more film. They don't use any more film. Or use interesting those days we call it Kodak film lah. So Japan also have film, Fuji film, all kind of other name lah. But since Kodak is the first who produce film in the world, so we always call Kodak film. But in Japan, they produce also film. We call it Fuji film and a few other product. But once they come up with uh, this new camera using the technology, we they don't we don't use any more film. You just can take the uh, film and then you can print the picture, link it to the computer or any printer. But Kodak company in America. Kodak is American company lah. The first company in the world who produce film to take picture. Refuse to change. They don't believe the Japanese technology doing digital, taking film by digital and then link it to the computer, produce the, the film. For them, it's not working. They still produce the Kodak film. They don't want to uh, change their film into using technology, using digital camera or kind of thing. So what happened? After next 10 or 15 years, the technology on uh, camera is so rapid changing, nobody even, nobody using camera using film anymore. Film, eh? using the Kodak film or Fuji film anymore. 
So because of that, what happened? Kodak went bankrupt. Uh, they call it went out of service. Actually bankrupt lah. Because due to the change of technology, they don't want to change, nobody want to buy the film. So you gone bankrupt lah. Went out of service. So technology is another tool in marketing. You have to be very careful. Is any other product is already now using technology, you, you still using the old system, my God, you're going to close shop. So technology now currently is a very, very dangerous or important thing in marketing uh, activities you have to look into. You must change very fast to adapt the situation. Otherwise, you close down. It's good example, Kodak. Kodak is not one year company. It's more than 100 years company. And they are the first one who do film in this world. So you Google to the ask for the story of Kodak. Uh, and then you can understand my lecture much better. New product, new opportunities. Tesla breakthrough with his high electric car. For example, another product now, car. Tesla now producing electric car. So now, this new technology of electric car is catching up very popular. So all the car company now are scrambling to also produce either electric car or hybrid car. What they do? They can use petrol for the car, they also can use electric. Now you can see on the road a lot of, we call it hybrid car. But Tesla, no lah, they produce 100% electric car. So those car, the old uh, system using only petrol, if they not changing to either hybrid or in the long term they're going to produce their own electric car, they're going to close shop. Same story like the Kodak. Uh, this is what technology can do in the marketing activities. Can affect your marketing activities. So another one, improve safety products. Car seats now decline 40% in casualties among kids during the crash. Uh, those days, uh, those days lah, my age, those days 40 years ago, when you drive car, there's no seat belt. Now, every car is compulsory to have seat belt. Seat belts, eh? belts, eh? seat belt. So this is the improved safety product. Because of the seat belt now, People died from uh, accident 40% less. So this is also another market product. You can do some new market product. For example, like in this case, uh, this company start now producing safety beds, which can help reduce the casualty of among uh, casualty among kids and also adults lah. Uh, reduce during. Uh, uh, heavy collision or accident. So this also you can can be another good business. For example, lah, last time nobody produced safety belt. Now safety belt is one of the good business to do to sell to car manufacturers. Political and legal, okay. Political environment consists of laws, government, agency, pressure group, organization and society. I can give you a good example today lah. Political decision. Because of COVID now, the government said no foreign student can come to Malaysia because of this COVID pandemic. All colleges you see who have a lot of foreign students now suffer like hell. Some of them close down because their business of student from foreign country cannot come to Malaysia. Uh, this is we call it Political decision affect also your marketing activities. How do you want to market overseas for foreign student to come to Malaysia? Where the government said we don't allow them to come. Uh, These political activities also will jeopardize your marketing activities. So this also sometimes is very difficult to predict. But when it happen, it affect a business. Legal, okay? Legislation regul regulating business, for example, labor law. Majesty 1002. Government said now, last time, 10 years ago, I can employ anybody, I can pay the salary, whatever I can afford. 
whatever they would accept. They say, I'm going to see, maybe 10 years ago, I employ a lecturer, I say, I give you 800 ringgit. They accept, okay, they start working for me. Today, cannot. Because of laws, the law passed said that you want to employ people, minimum salary, like imagine city, 1,002, small city, maybe small town, maybe 1,000, the government uh, uh, regulation. So I cannot employ anyone to give salary less than 1,002. Uh, this is what we have said, the law, the legal uh, regulation that also affect your business and marketing activities. Then QPAC for government servant union. And then the government said, now all big companies, they may, must allow trade union in the organization, in the company. If you got maybe 200 to, uh, to 1,000 uh, workers, you must have uh, trade union. So the trade union mean that mean the workers can demand things here and there. And whatever they're not happy, they can demand from you. Because the union is uh, recognized by the government. So this is another legal uh, condition when the government uh, allowed it affect your marketing activities. Competitors, sure. Every business there is competitor. Uh, uh, the irony of it, yeah, the funny things of it, yeah, any good business you get more competitors to be to come. For sure, because you're doing good business, somebody see you doing that business good, they will come to compete and do the same business with you. Uh, this may affect your marketing activities. How big they are? Sometimes there's a problem where big people also can come into a small area. What I'm trying to say, we are doing a small college, for example, uh, we, we're doing a small college. And uh, they see that the college business is good. There are big companies also setting up colleges. Uh, then it will definitely have affect you because you are not so strong they are big when they are big they have more muscle they have more money they more have a more strong uh, facility so this is going to affect your business your marketing how dense the market depend if let's say the college business is so good and we also cannot cope up because too many people demand and then if another competitor come it does not really affect you maybe it complement you so that's another thing that we can look into lah. Uh, sometimes competitors also are good not all competitors are not good so depend on the market share that other people can take does not affect you how interdependent is the industry then also let's say in your producing uh, cars, for example, there's a lot interdependent on other industry. Those people producing the tire, those producing the engine, those producing the wiper, all kinds of the component. These are product that interdependent to the factory that produce. So this also depend because let's say if you are selling tire to the car manufacturer, suddenly now the car car business in the country drops, decline for what reason or whatever economic activity. So less car are sold. So if your business is depend, you are interdependent to the car factory, now you can sell also a lot of your tires because the demand is low. This also will affect your marketing activities because you are interdependent to the industry. Some people business like that, they depend on the industry. Industry grows, they grow. They are not on their own. They are interdependent to other countries, uh, other factories. They are related to them. That business, that factory business grows, they grow. But if it goes down, they also go down. So this is also another problem in your marketing activities. Do they allow newcomers? Well, uh, for example, in Malaysia today, uh, the government said we have uh, quite big numbers of uh, college and university already so we don't allow new colleges and universities set up in Malaysia uh, so if these uh, policies the government have uh, then will help you as the business because they are newcomers not coming to the area or the other place to set up university or colleges or to set up whatever industry 
For example, car lah, car industry in Malaysia. If somebody want to set a car factory, the government said no. We have two factory already, Pro2 and uh, Proton. So we don't want too many competitor because through that way, then the market of Proton and Pro2 are secured because no new competitors coming in. So that's a good policy for you, but maybe not good for others. How unique are you you compare to competitors? Then another thing is the business lah. If your I mean your product and the business lah, your product is unique. No other people producing it. Yeah. Even they are competitors, but they are not as good as your product because your product is still unique. Unique. And then you don't worry about your competitors because people will still go to you to buy your product because of your uniqueness. Where do you sit among the competitors? So you need to uh, position yourself so among your competitors. If too much, too many competitors in one area, uh, you better set to your activities in another area. So these are all your marketing considerations you have to do. The external factors they have to look into to do your marketing activities. Producing product is one thing. Marketing for me is more difficult than even to produce the product. So marketing subject is very, very uh, detailed so that you can sell your product. Selling product is a straightforward. But marketing, we have looked into just now so many factors, external factors, internal factors that can affect your selling of your product. The market competes for growth, cost, resources, and their goals is to maximize their profit and market share. Of course, when you do the market, you need to make profit. So, to make profit, you need to sell more, the growth of your product. The more you sell, the more you profit. And then you need to maximize your profit. To maximize your profit more, you must fight for the market share. Uh, this is what happening in the business world today. They call it everybody fight for the market share. But to fight, how are you to do it? So sometimes you have to reduce your cost. Sometimes you have to increase your sale through other channels. So these are all things that you need to look into against your competitor. Global competition focus on foreign firm. We're talking about <coughs> big firm, we call it global competition. Lah. Just now we're talking more on domestic competition. Global competition focus on foreign firm entering the market with better technology and better price. Uh, for example, Gili took over Proton with its, with its competitive technology and price. Okay, good example in Malaysia today, last time Proton produced their own car. 100% belong to Malaysian company. But they don't change much like Kodak, you know. The technology not, don't change much. Whereas Gili from China, uh, they produce car and they develop new technology for a car, more competitive, more uh, cost effective of the using of the petrol. So because of that, they managed to take over Proton. Because Proton is like not more competitive, they cannot compete with Gili. They have to accept Gili from China as a partner to survive. So this is another thing happening because of the global competition. For Gili, why they need to take Proton? Just as I said just now, because government said no more new license for car manufacturer in Malaysia. So Gili cannot set up a factory in Malaysia. So for them, they have the technology. Their product is much better priced now than uh, Proton. Proton produce a car cost maybe 10,000. Gili produce a car cost only 6,000 for example. Eh? So their cost is much, much better than Proton cost of producing a car. So because of this, Gili bought 51% of Proton and Proton lost the control of the company. So global competition also now become one of the major threats and challenges all over the world because of pre-trade liberalization adopted by most of the countries.
So this is another big issue that maybe you need to study in your business. There is global competition where foreign product come and compete at your doorstep. Okay, what we have here? Corporate social responsibility. Let's see what you can understand. Corporate social responsibility, or in short, we call it CSR, is a business concern for society welfare. This is to create long-term relationship between firms and society. A good CSR will protect better image for the organization while giving back to the community. So, such Corporate social responsibility, there are four types. One is economic, legal, ethical, philanthropy. So, we can see this uh, pyramid. Eh? The corporate social responsibility, what mentioned earlier on. The base is the economic, be profitable. So as a business, first thing you need to be profitable. Don't become like Kodak, has to go bankrupt. Yeah? So every business, you need to work through profitability. Is there a guarantee any business you profit? The answer is no. You ask me, how do you do business? Do you think that you can uh, guarantee to make profit? I said no. It's like gamble. 50-50% chance. You can make, you can lose. You can profit, you also can lose. That is business. If all business is profit, then everybody in the world is doing business. Nobody is working for anybody. Please understand that. Yeah? So that's why you need to do proper marketing activities, uh, proper strategies in marketing, all kind of things. So the basic thing first, in CSR, you must make profit. Second, legal, obey the law. You must pay the tax, pay the income tax, everything you must pay according to the law provided in the business environment. Ethical, you make sure you in the business, you don't involve in corruption, getting contract through bribery, all kind of thing. This is ethical. Then, with all the profit, then you have done everything in a good manner, you make the profit, then you become philanthropy. You donate back to the society. You give back to the society. Okay, you make one million a year, I give back to the society to help the poor people, to help the needs, 100,000 from my profit, 200,000 of my profit. So that is, we call it, corporate social responsibility is part and parcel of the economic activity. Some people use that as their marketing tools. Oh, people say, say, look this company, Aeon, make 10 million a year. 1 million, I don't need back to the poor people, to the needy people. So it becomes like promotion for them. So CSR is part of the business entity. So you want to run an organization, you want to run a business, you must have also in mind, once you make profit, you must do the CSR activity to be part and parcel of your business activity. We have to mention here because if we don't do this, other people do, did, do that. So people must figure out that company which have CSR is much better than you because you only make money for your own stomach, you never share with other people. So very important, CSR should be one of your part and parcel of the business and marketing strategy. Okay, in summary, marketing is a bit a dry subject. You need to read and you need to go around what I said just now. You go to the supermarket, you see how the activities, then you can learn fast. For any anything you learn, you try to relate to the environment outside there. Yeah? So, we already identified to understand the six microeconomic external environment of marketing activities. Yeah? How your marketing activities need to be done. Yeah? 
based on the external factors. Identify and understand the factors within marketing environment. All this we talking about social strata, uh, baby boomers, you know, all these are factors that can affect your marketing environment. And then the last part, the CSR. So in any business, you must have the marketing activities. But once you take, start to make money, you must not forget the CSR. If you don't, don't make money, it's okay. You can hold on first. But once you make, CSR can be part and parcel of your marketing strategy. So thank you very much. You need to try to Google and learn more what I said just now. So that you can a little bit more understand. Don't depend totally on the lecturer. We also give you notes. We give you also e-books. Go and read and uh, learn more. Google more. And that will help you understand the marketing uh, uh, subject much better. Yeah. As I said, marketing subject, a little bit dry subject. But if you can understand, it's very good. A lot of people just specialize on marketing. In Malaysia or other country, I can see there are very little, not many people uh, specialize on marketing. But if you are specialized in marketing, can be a good business or can be a good job. Especially like marketing, you need to be very good talkative. You know how to talk, you know how to sell product. Uh, there's another in thing that you have. Uh, then you can work as a marketer. But for the time being, you just learn what is marketing activities and see whether you have interest in that. Marketing can be also a good uh, job to look into. Okay, thank you very much for listening and try to understand and discuss further in the class. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.